Hello, 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 hello. This is Morel with Stories for Kids. This particular story is called The Book of Dragons. Okay, it will be in two or three parts, yes? So I will do another video with the second part of it. And I brought a little friend along with me to join me. Okay, hello again. All right, the book of Beast. He happened to be building a palace when the news came and he left all the bricks kicking about the floor for Nurse to clear up. But then the news was rather remarkable news. You see, there was a knock at the front door, knock, 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 and voices talking downstairs. And Lionel thought it was the man come to see about the gas, which had not been allowed to be lighted since the day when Lionel made a swing by tying a skipping rope to the gas bracket. And then, quite suddenly, Nurse came in and said, Master Lionel, dear, they've come to fetch you to go and be king. Then she made haste to change his smock and to wash his face and hands and brush his hair. And all the time she was doing it, Lionel kept wriggling and fidgeting and saying, oh, don't nurse, and I'm, my, I'm sure my ears are quite clean, or um, never mind my hair, it's all right, and oh, oh, that will do. You're going on as if you was going to be an eel instead of a king, said nurse. The minute nurse let go for a moment, Lionel bolted off without waiting for his clean handkerchief. And in the drawing room, there were two very grave-looking gentlemen in red robes with fur and gold coronets with velvet sticking up out of the middle like the cream in the very expensive jam tarts. They bowed low to Lionel and the gravest one said, Sire, your great, 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 great grandfather, the king of this country, is dead and now you have got to come and be king. Yes, please, sir, said Lionel. When does it begin? You will be crowned this afternoon, said the grave gentleman, who was not quite so grave looking as the other. Um, would you like me to bring nurse, or what time would you like me to be fetched? And hadn't I better put on my velvet suit with a lace collar, said Lionel, who had often been out to tea. Your nurse will be removed to the palace later. No, never mind about changing your suit. The royal robes will cover all that up. The grave gentlemen led the way to a coach with eight white horses which was drawn up in front of the house where Lionel lived. It was number seven on the left-hand side of the street as you go up. Lionel ran upstairs at the last minute and he kissed Nurse and said, Thank you for washing me. I wish I'd let you do the other ear. No, there's no time now. Give me the hanky 
Um, goodbye, Nurse. Goodbye, Ducky, said Nurse. Be a good little king now and say please and thank you and remember to pass the cake to the little girls and don't have more than two helps of anything. So off went Lionel to be made a king. He had never expected to be a king any more than you have, so it was all quite new to him. So new that he had never even thought of it. And as the coach went through the town, he had to bite his tongue to be quite sure it was real. Because if his tongue was real, it showed he wasn't dreaming. Half an hour before, he had been building with bricks in the nursery, and now the streets were all fluttering with flags. Every window was crowded with people waving handkerchiefs and scattering flowers. There were scarlet soldiers everywhere along the pavements, and all the bells of all the churches were ringing like mad. And like a great song to the music of their ringing, he heard thousands of people shouting, Long live Lionel! Long live our little king! He was a little sorry at first that he had not put on his best clothes, but he soon forgot to think about that. If he had been a girl, he would very likely have bothered about it the whole time. As they went along, the grave gentlemen who were the Chancellor and the Prime Minister explained the things which Lionel did not understand. I thought we were a republic, said Lionel. I'm sure there hasn't been a king for some time. Sire, your great-great-great-great-great-grandfather's death happened when my grandfather was a little boy, said the Prime Minister. And since then, your loyal people have been saving up to buy you a crown, so much a week, you know, according to people's means, sixpence a week from those who have first-rate pocket money, down to a half penny a week from those who haven't so much. You know, it's the rule that the crown must be paid for by the people. But hadn't my great, great, however much it is, grandfather, um, a crown? Yes, but he sent it to be tinned over for fear of vanity, and he had had all the jewels taken out and sold them to buy books. He was a strange man, a very good king he was, but He had his faults. He was fond of books. Almost with his last breath, he sent the crown to be tinned. And he never lived to pay the tinsmith's bill. Here, the Prime Minister wiped away a tear. And just then, the carriage stopped and Lionel was taken out of the carriage to be crowned. Being crowned is much more tiring work than you would suppose, and by the time it was over, and Lionel had worn the royal robes for an hour or two, and had had his hand kissed by everybody whose business it was to do it, he was quite worn out and was very glad to get into the palace nursery. Nurse was there, Mm -hmm. and tea was ready. There was seedy cake and plummy cake and 
jam and hot buttered toast and the, the prettiest china with red and gold and blue flowers on it and real tea and as, as many cups of it as you liked. After tea, Lionel said, I think I should like a book. Will you get me one, nurse? Bless the child, said nurse. You don't suppose you've lost the use of your legs with just being a king? Run along, do, and get your books yourself. Sir Lionel went down into the library. The Prime Minister and the Chancellor were there. And when Lionel came in, they bowed very low and were beginning to ask Lionel most politely what on earth he was coming bothering for now. When Lionel cried out, Oh, what a wonderful of books! Are they yours? They are yours, your majesty, answered the chancellor. They were the property of the late king, your great, 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 yes, I know, Lionel interrupted. Well, I shall read them all. I love to read. I'm so glad I learned to read. If I might venture to advise your majesty, said the Prime Minister, I should not read these books. You're great, yes, yes, said Lionel quickly. He was a very good king, oh yes, really a very superior king in his way, but he was a little, well, Strange. Mad? asked Lionel cheerfully. No, no. Both the gentlemen were sincerely shocked. Not mad. But if I may express it so, he was um, too clever by half. And I should not like a little king of mine to have anything to do with his books. Lionel looked puzzled. The fact is, the Chancellor went on, twisting his red beard in an agitated way. You're great. Go on, said Lionel. He was a wizard. But he wasn't. Of course not. A most worthy king was your great. I see but I wouldn't touch his books. Just this one, cried Lionel, laying his hands on the cover of a great brown book that lay on the study table. It had gold patterns on the brown leather and gold clasps with turquoises and rubies in the twist of them and gold corners so that the leather should not wear out too quickly. I must look at this one, Lionel said. From the back in big letters, he read, The Book of Beast. The Chancellor said, Don't be a silly little king. But Lionel had got the gold clasp undone, and he opened the first page, and there was a beautiful butterfly all red and brown and yellow and blue, so beautifully painted that it looked as if it were alive. There, said Lionel, isn't that lovely? Why? But as he spoke, the beautiful butterfly fluttered its many coloured wings on the yellow old page of the book and flew up and out of the window. Well, 
said the Prime Minister. As soon as he could speak for the lump of wonder that had got into his throat and tried to choke him. <gasps> That's magic, that is. But before he had spoken, the king had turned the next page and there was a shining bird, complete and beautiful, in every blue feather of him. Under him was written, Blue Bird of Paradise. And while the king gave enchanted at the charming picture, the blue bird fluttered his wings on the yellow page and spread them and flew out of the book. Then the Prime Minister snatched the book away from the king and shut it up on the blank page where the bird had been and put it on a very high shelf. And the Chancellor gave the king a good shaking and said, You're a naughty, disobedient little king. And was very angry indeed. I don't see that I've done any harm, said Lionel. He hated being shaken, as all boys do. He would much rather have been slapped. No harm, said the Chancellor. Ha, ah, but what do you know about it? That's the question. How do you know what might have been on the next page? A snake? Or a worm? Or a centipede? Or a revolutionist? Or something like that? Well, I'm sorry if I've vexed you, said Lionel. Come, let's kiss and be friends. So he kissed the Prime Minister and they settled down for a nice quiet game of noughts and crosses, while the Chancellor went to add up his accounts. Join me, join me for the next part of the story. I'll be back with the next part of the story and next video. So join me, Morel, for the next part of the story about the books of dragons. Yes. Join me for the next story. Okay, I'll see you then. All right, be good. Take care. I'll be back soon. Bye.